as I mentioned before, uh, my name is Ashley Ricamo. I work in the e-learning support services office in our library here at AU. Um, our team does a lot of different things. Um, probably the thing that you will be most, um, you know, be coming in contact with us the most for is Canvas support and technical assistance with Canvas and some other tools that integrate with Canvas like Zoom and Kaltura and, and things that you might learn a little later once you're familiar and comfortable with Canvas. We also do instructional design consultations if you want help um, figuring out maybe what's the best way to do what you would like to do or how to um, put your content materials and activities in Canvas, um, we can help you with that. We do multimedia production. Um, we have a whole video team who is available to um, record videos that you might want to put into your courses, so instructional media. Um, they also record events that you might be having on campus. If you have a speaker come for your class and would like to record it, that kind of thing, um, our team can do that. And then we do course design and review as well. Um, so this morning we're talking all about Canvas. This is our learning management system here at AU. Um, and it can do almost anything that you would like to do as far as creating an online space to um, either be your course, if it's a fully online course, or to complement your in-person or um, hybrid course. You can use Canvas to um, store all of the content for your course. So you can put your syllabus in there. You can put um, any materials, readings, things like that, any links or videos that students might need to access. Um, you can create and receive assignment submissions from students, so they can submit files to you, um, a variety of different files, actually. It doesn't just have to be things like papers. You can give tests and surveys online with your students. You can run a discussion board, and you can do all of your grading within Canvas, so that is a possibility, too. Um, it has the capability to kind of set up whatever style of grade grading system you use. Um, and then you can go in and um, read the student submissions that you've received through Canvas and grade them right there in Canvas. You can also communicate with your students by posting announcements and sending emails. So we're going to try to get through all of these things kind of at a high level view um, in the next uh, hour or so. So we are going to um, go ahead and jump in um, from here on out. Most of what I'm going to be showing you this morning is um, a real Canvas demo. I'm going to be playing around in the Canvas site. If you'd like to follow along, you're perfectly welcome. Um, in order to access Canvas, a lot of people go through the MyAU portal, and then there is a small link to access Canvas up in the upper right-hand corner. Um, but if you would like a URL that takes you directly to Canvas um, or one that you can bookmark for later, um, the address is canvas.american.edu. So I'm going to switch over real quick to a browser. I'm going to type in that canvas.american.edu address in the URL up there. When you come to the Canvas um, login page, you have to make a choice. Um, for most of you um, who are AU faculty and staff, um, you're going to be using the button on the left. So this is for anyone affiliated with AU who has an AU email account and password. So you click on that and you can log in. I'm not going to do the whole login thing because of the duo, but once you log in to Canvas, the landing page, once you're logged in, is called the dashboard. This is what it looks like. Um, you have um, all of your different courses are going to be displayed as tiles here. Um, they're listed or divided into published and unpublished courses, which we'll get to a little bit later. So probably for most of you um, on your dashboards, your courses for the fall are going to be under the unpublished courses section kind of down the bottom of the page. Before we click into a course, um, I want to spend some time with this blue bar on the left hand side. So what this is called is the global navigation bar. It is always here on the far left hand side, pretty much no matter where you are in Canvas. So it allows you to access certain places in Canvas, no matter which course you're working in, no matter kind of where you have found yourself um, within the Canvas system. Um, this bar should always be here on the left. 
um, and you can click and access different Canvas tools from here. I'm going to go through each one of these, um, and then we're going to jump into a course, and we'll kind of get started with, um, you know, the techniques of building out your course content and, and doing things in a Canvas course. So on the left here, um, we've got a couple buttons, and each of the buttons is fairly self-explanatory as to where it's going to take you. So for the account button, for instance, right up at the top, if you click on that, you'll get a little pop-out menu. Um, and this is where you can do things related to your Canvas account. Um, there are a lot of different links here. What I would say um, to get yourself set up and started with Canvas, you really only need to focus on three the notifications, profile, and settings. So we'll go through each of those three things. The notifications here, um, this is essentially where you can set your preferences for how you want to receive um, email notifications when different things happen in Canvas. The ones that most um, instructors are interested in are um, announcements. So these are under course activities. Um, by default, the announcement is turned on. An announcement created by you is not uh, turned on by default. So it'll look like this. Anything that has a kind of gray icon with a slash through it is currently off. So to turn it on, all you need to do is click on that bell icon and decide how often you would like to be notified when this particular thing happens. So for whenever you create an announcement and send it to your students in Canvas, most instructors like to be notified immediately. So we can turn that on, but you can select all different kinds. Um, the other thing that is not turned on by default, but a lot of instructors like to be notified about is um, when they send an email, they like to get a copy of that email. Um, just to make sure it went through, it's kind of a peace of mind thing. So again, the default is that conversations created by me. I'm not sure why it's listed as conversations here in the settings, but that's what it is. Um, that is an email. If you want to turn on conversations created by me, scroll down to the conversations area and you can turn that on. Um, the rest of the settings are turned on by default, but it's still worthwhile to come through here and check your notifications. Again, what this is going to be doing is it will send you an email notification of when a certain thing happens in Canvas. So that's totally up to you, all of your preferences. Um, you can just change everything in here. I will say um, kind of a sticking point for some instructors um, is that students can also do this. So um, students can come into this notifications um, tab in their account area of Canvas and change all of their notification settings. So by default, students will receive an email um, when you post an announcement in your course and when you send an email to them uh, within the Canvas emailing system. Uh, they can turn that off though. So um, it might be worthwhile if you really want those students to have that on um, is to remind them at the beginning of the semester to turn on their notification settings um, for conversations and for announcements. Um, the next link here has to do with your profile. So here you can do a couple of different things. You can add a picture. Um, by clicking on this little pencil icon, you can either take a picture with your webcam or upload something that might be a little bit nicer from your system. Um, and if you click the small three dots over here on the right hand side, there is an edit area. So you can add pronouns, you can add titles, um, you can add a biography. If you have a website, you can put in any links here. So you can kind of customize this page how you might like to have it look. And then settings, um, you probably don't need to really touch too much in this settings area, but what you might want to just double check is that your time zone is set as the time zone that you're currently in. Um, Canvas, the company, is located in Utah, so when I first started using Canvas, my account was set at Mountain Time. Um, so you might just want to double check to come in here and make sure that it's set in Eastern time so that when you set due dates with times, um, it is kind of showing your students the correct time. 
you can change that by clicking this little edit button over here with the pencil. Does anybody have any questions so far about how to log into Canvas or anything having to do with this account button on the global navigation bar? I don't think I see anything in the chat. Okay, I'm going to move on to the next button then. Um, so the next one that you will have on your Canvas account is this dashboard. Again, that's going to take you to that landing page where all your courses are. So that's kind of handy if you get lost somewhere in Canvas and you need to get back to the kind of main page. Um, you can click that dashboard. It'll take you right back here. So the courses that show up on your dashboard are going to be courses that are currently running or courses that don't have any kind of due date. So sometimes you might get added to a continuous course, um, which is basically just a course that's open all the time. Um, some schools use this as a kind of uh, organizational space for their professors. So you might see some of those, but for the most part, you're gonna have fall 2023 um, courses on here. When fall 2023 is over, the courses are going to close and they're going to disappear from your dashboard, but they're not gone forever. You can still find them by clicking on this courses button on the left. Um, what you'll want to do is scroll all the way down to the little pop up that comes and click on all courses. This is going to take you to a list of every course that you're enrolled in, whether it shows up on your dashboard or not. Um, and so if you scroll down to do to past enrollments, that's where you'll be able to find your fall 2023 courses once spring 24 starts. Um, so don't worry, we do get some calls from folks sometimes that they think they've been erased from their course or it's gone in some way, it's been deleted. All that content and all the historical records of your students' activity are still there. You just have to go look in it in the courses area instead. Um, groups, I don't think that you will use the groups feature a lot as instructors. Um, when a student clicks on groups, it's going to take them or kind of show them all of the groups they've been added to. So as an instructor, you are probably not going to be um, added to very many groups, um, but your students will be. So this could be a handy feature for them to kind of access the Canvas group spaces um, in the courses in which they have groups. Um, this is not where you would go to create groups. We can go over that a little bit later. So again, probably not a button you all are going to use a ton. The calendar, on the other hand, is a very useful tool. I think it's pretty neat. Um, what it does is it shows you or your students, basically anybody who accesses it, um, all of the assignments that are due throughout the semester in a calendar view. You don't have to do anything um, manually to set up this calendar view for your students. The only thing that you'll have to do, which we will go over later, is set a due date when you create a certain kind of graded assignment. So that could be a quiz, it could be an assignment, it could be a graded discussion board. Um, as long as you provide a due date, uh, Canvas is automatically going to populate a notification on um, this calendar. So here you can see, let me go to September, which will be a little busier. You can see some different assignments start to pop up. All of the different courses that students are enrolled in are color coded. This one's a little hard to see because one is gray and one is kind of a dark green, but sometimes they'll have like blue or yellow or pink, you know, brighter colors. Um, so students can kind of see um, at a glance when all the assignments are due for their courses. And over here on the right hand side, they can customize this view. So right now I only have a couple um, different courses selected, but students can toggle those on and off depending if they want to see everything at a glance or just assignments for a certain course. The other neat thing about the calendar tool is if a student or you clicks on any of these little assignment notifications and they click on the link of the title of that assignment, it'll take them directly to the page where they can submit it. So I think that's a pretty handy um, thing for the, for the calendar. You can also make appointments. Um, I'm not really going to go into that because it takes a little while and I do wanna make sure we get through everything today. Um, but if you click on some place on the um, calendar, you can add different kinds of events for your courses. You can add assignments, you can have reminders and to-dos for your students. 
You can also create appointment groups where students can come in and um, kind of sign up for a time slot to meet with you. Um, again, I'm not going to go into all but if you have questions about it, you can definitely ask at the end. Um, if we have time, I can go through it or I can send you documentation that shows you how. Um, there is also an inbox button here on the global navigation bar. Um, this inbox tool um, basically is an emailing service that runs kind of within Canvas. Um, the messages that you send, as long as somebody has a notification setting turned on to get an email to their AU email about an inbox um, notification, it will send it. But if they have that turned off, the inbox messages just stay in Canvas here. If you have new messages, a little red icon will show up and tells you how many inbox messages you have. I don't have any right now, um, but once you start getting some messages, it'll show up here. To create a new um, email, you're going to click on this button here with the pencil to compose a new message. One of the things that is a little tricky for people who are unused to Canvas is that the inbox tool can you can use or excuse me you can message your students in any course from this page. So you don't have to go click into a course to email the students in that course. You just click this inbox button on the left blue bar, and then you can access and email groups of students or TAs or whoever you want to message right from this inbox page for all your courses. So let's see. Say I wanted to try to think what we might have some people in here. Um, Say I wanted to message this group of people, I can click on the address book and I can see who all is in here. This wasn't a great one to pick because there's not that many people. Perfect, this is what I wanted you to see. Um, so when you click that address book, you have some groups here to message. So I can choose that I wanna message everybody who's enrolled in this course. So that'll do any role, you, TAs, students, whoever is all in there. I can choose to email just teachers. So if I click all, uh, the teachers, then I can choose all the teachers or I can choose some individuals. Same for students. If I click on, oh, I just wanna message students, I can email all of the students or I can just choose some individuals to email. You can also just start typing names. Um, so for example, I can type in this student's name and find it that way too, instead of using that little address book line. And then you type um, your subject, your message, you can add any attachments that you would like and you click send and it'll send everything um, to their Canvas accounts. All right, I see a question here. Okay. All right. And then um, the history button on this bar kind of just shows you the last couple of places you've been in Canvas. Um, so some people might like to use that if they wanted, you know, maybe you were working on developing this discussion yesterday and I, I need to fix some details. I can use that history and just access that very quickly. The Canvas Commons is kind of a neat area. Um, you can find all kinds of different templates and things like that here. So we have some templates here available for you if you've never used Canvas before and you would like to not start from scratch. Um, you can download any of these different templates that we have here up on the top featured area. Um, but there's also some other things that different um, professors have shared, and you could share your own things here too. So if you create something um, like this person has created a page that they would like to share with other instructors easily, um, somebody created a module, an assignment, uh, an entire course, you can kind of come into the Commons and upload it here and then share it with other instructors here at AU. The help button is also very useful. Um, there's a lot of help resources linked here. 
So we have a learning support services page that if you click that, um, you can access a bunch of different guides on how to use Canvas. You'll also see things like upcoming workshops listed here with registration links. Any um, embedded instructional design support information um, or contact information here. I'm going to put this particular link in the chat for you. And here you can see all kinds of guides on how to do different things in Canvas. So for example, how do I build a module? How do I create a quiz? Um, how do I link my Zoom account? Um, all those different kinds of things. Um, you can also chat with Canvas Support Live. Um, this is very useful for things that are not AU specific. So say you run into a problem and you can't quite figure out how to grade a, an assignment, for example. Canvas Chat, um, because it is kind of Canvas the company, they can help you with that. Um, for things that are AU specific, like maybe you are not seeing a Canvas course on your dashboard that you're teaching, or maybe you can't access Canvas at all, or um, things that are much more kind of geared towards AU admin kind of things related to Canvas, um, you would contact our Canvas support um, for help. So sometimes folks get frustrated talking to ch the Canvas chat because the those folks can't solve their problem. But if you have a general question on how to do something in Canvas or there's a tech problem, they can help you. Um, you can, we also have our AU Canvas support team information here. Canvas at American.edu is our email. I'll put it in the chat at the end, um, or you can call us 202-885-3904. And then there's some other kind of different things here. You can report a problem. Um, you can, for students can ask their instructor a question. It's worthwhile to go through some of these different um, help links here. Okay, so that was a very quick uh, overview of this global navigation blue bar on the left. Does anybody have any questions so far about anything that we covered there? I have, I have one question on uh, sure. uh, my class is online. Uh, previously, I've been using the 2U system. Okay. Uh, in the 2U system, there's a thing called courses, and you click on it, and then uh, you click on the one that you're getting ready to start, and it opens up Zoom. Have we got a s equivalent thing in Canvas? Um, so we do have a Zoom integration um, that is possible with Canvas. Um, you'll have to link your Zoom account and then create a um, Kind of a zoom link for your course but once you do that it's set up for the semester and you can just go in and click zoom and start the meetings for your students because uh, i don't i don't have any idea how that's set up it, it in in to you it's just there i never thought about like what is my zoom account or any of those other things right is that a thing that the what is he called you know the i'm an adjunct mm -hmm. so there's a I guess he's called the course coordinator or something, the AU professor that's in charge of the thing. Is that something that he will be setting up or do I have to figure this out myself? I would guess probably you would have to do it yourself because oh, okay. for every course, the Zoom um, account that is linked with that course would be yours. Um, and I don't think we have like admins for Zoom have the possibility to create a, um, you know meetings for other people, but most people don't. Oh. Um, there is a Zoom training that uh, mm. CTRL is hosting. My colleague is teaching it. Mm. Um, I forget the exact date, but if you go back to the August faculty workshops page, yeah. there is a Zoom one that you can um, uh, that you can sign up for. Because I'm unaware that I have a Zoom account that's quote unquote my Zoom account. I thought I was just using some AU Zoom account or something like that. Yeah. So there is a, everybody has access to an AU Zoom account as part of their um all like as part of all of their accounts at AU. So but if I don't have time to go over it in yeah, detail yeah. Okay. today, um, but if you sign up for that workshop, okay. um, 
she'll definitely, she'll, but we'll go over all of those different aspects, how to, you know, get your account at AU, how to link it with Canvas, how to make assign, uh, appointments and all that kind of thing. Okay. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions come up so far? I don't see anything in the chat. All right. I'm going to move on. Um, we are going to go into a course now and um, talk about all the different kinds of things you can do in a course. So from your dashboard to access any of the courses, you just find the tile you want and click on the name. So when you're on your home page of the course, um, I, the default is just, it's going to have an empty space and it says create a module. Um, but once you start putting different things in, it'll have something populated in the middle. But what we've got um, on either side of the home page is we have a navigation menu for this particular course. So this is separate than the blue one that we just went over. This one is for just this specific course. So all the links in here are going to take you to different spots in this course. And then you've got some buttons on the right hand side, which we can go over a little bit later. So on the left-hand menu, you can see you've got some different links here for different Canvas tools and features. Um, so you've got a link for announcements. You've got a link to post your syllabus. You've got a modules um, link, which is where all the content goes. Assignments, quizzes, discussions. You've got a grade book. Here's your Zoom integration. Um, there's a people list. All kinds of stuff over here on the left. We're going to go through a couple of the... Um, most commonly used ones. I am going to, um, well, I'll start with syllabus because most people, the first thing they want to do is they want to get their syllabus in to the course. So if you click on the syllabus link, it's going to take you to the syllabus page. Um, and what you can do here is there is an edit button here with a pencil. Pretty much anytime you want to change something that is on a particular page, you're looking for this edit button. And what it does is it opens up a text box for me um, with some different buttons across the top. So yours isn't going to have anything in it. It's going to be blank like this. There's kind of two different things that most people typically do. A lot of folks will just upload the file that they have. Some folks like to copy and paste all of the content from their syllabus document, say from Word, and paste it into here so that it displays kind of as a web page with all the syllabus information. Some people also do both. Um, so to find a file um, and upload it, what you're going to look for on this toolbar is this little icon that looks like a piece of paper. If I hover the mouse over it, it pops up, it says documents. And when I click on it, it's going to ask me what type of document I would like to post here on my syllabus page. For most of you, you're going to upload a document. So that's what you're going to choose. If you don't see this icon with the paper, so sometimes if you have your screen minimized, um, it doesn't show up, but you could click on this small three dots on the right, and that kind of expands more options, then you should see the paper. So I'm going to upload a document. I'm going to click on that little paper icon and click upload a document. You get this kind of spaceship looking icon here where it's asking you to upload your file. There's two different ways you can do it. You can drag and drop the file right here within this dotted space, or you can click the rocket ship and find the file that you need um, on your computer. I'm going to just find wherever I need to find my syllabus that's on my computer and open and then submit. And so what it does here is it'll link the syllabus document so students can come in here and download it and read it. I'm going to, no matter which choice I do, uploading or copying and pasting, you always want to remember to click on that update syllabus button down in the lower right hand corner to save the changes. Okay, and so students can come in here, they can click on the download icon to download it directly, or they can click on it to get, um, to open it up and read it within Canvas. The syllabus page also has some nice features for students. Um, 
the course summary is basically a list of all of the assignments and appointments that are for a particular course um, listed chronologically. So students can see kind of a summary of all of their assignments that are due. Also over here on the right-hand side, there is a little mini calendar. Um, and let me find when the last assignment was, June 23rd. So any um, date that has an assignment due will be shaded with a gray color. So students can kind of see at a glance, all right, in June, I have two different assignments due for this class. If you choose a weighted um, grade book style, um, students will also be reminded over here on the right hand side what the different categories are and what the percentage weights are for each of those things. So that's kind of an overview of the syllabus page. Some folks don't like to have the course summary, so if you want to get rid of it, click on that edit button once more and you're going to uncheck the box that says show course summary. Then when I update, that will be gone. So it's kind of up to your personal preferences. I think those features are kind of neat and useful for students, but I understand it can look very cluttered and some folks want to get rid of it. So that's an option. Um, the next thing that most people want to do once they've got their syllabus loaded up is um, start loading content. And the modules area in Canvas is designed for you to be able to organize all of the content that students are going to need for their course. There's two different ways that most folks typically do this. Um, you know, of course, the world is your oyster and you can organize your modules page however you want. But what most folks tend to do is they will either break all of the content down by week or unit or chapter, however your course is structured. Um, where they put in all of the materials and assignments per week. Um, or um, some instructors will take the different modules and kind of treat them as folders. So they will have one module that is all of the readings. They will have one module that is all of the assignments, one module that might have things like discussion board links or something like that in there. Um, so the style that we have here in our demo course is week by week. And so you can kind of see, kind of get a sense of what the modules look like in Canvas. Um, they, if you've used Blackboard before, it's kind of like a Blackboard folder. Um, so you're going to put in everything that you want to put in within a module. And the modules are differentiated from each other kind of by boxes and they have gray header bars. So this Things that you can add to modules is almost any type of thing that exists in Canvas. Um, so first I'm going to create a module and then we'll fill it up with some stuff. Um, so to create new modules, so your course as an empty shell will not have modules yet, um, you are going to click on this blue plus module button in the upper right hand corner. So before I was saying, anytime you want to edit something, you are looking for a gray button with a pencil on it. Anytime you want to create something brand new in Canvas, you're going to look for that plus something button and it's bright blue. So I click that. I'm going to name my module something. And then I'm going to click add. So whenever you add a module in Canvas, it's going to be all the way at the bottom of the page. And I'm going to just move it up so we can see it a little bit better. So when you create a new module, you get that bar, and then you've got a space here that is ready to go. So there are a couple different things you can do here. You can drag and drop your files in here. If you have actual, you know, say PDFs or Word doc files, maybe some image files that you might want to put in here, you can drag them and drop. You can use the choose files button um, to also kind of open up that finder thing and find the files on your computer. What you can also do is use this small plus sign that is in the header bar for the module. And you can put in all kinds of different things. So it doesn't just have to be files. Most people put in files because, you know, they have readings and things they want to share. Um, but you can also link assignments. You can link quizzes. Um, you can link discussions. So for any activities that your students might need to do as part of a certain module, 
Um, you can also link URLs. So if you have maybe a web page they need to go to or an article, maybe uh, on the Washington Post or something, um, or a YouTube video, you can link that in the module. You can also link different tools. So some departments have kind of third-party content providers. Um, you can find them and link them using this external tool option. You can also create pages in Canvas. Pages are what they sound like. It's basically a web page. Um, so you can use pages to put um, any instructions to your students, any descriptions about what they might need to do in a week. Um, if you want to create an overview for what you're going to do um, in that week, you can use pages for that. You can also, instead of um, just putting all of the files directly into Can the Canvas module, you could create a page and link all of them there instead. So I'm going to start my module with a page. So again, I went to this drop down menu at the top. And now I select a page, so it says we're going to add a page to this module. If you already have some content, you can choose something that already exists, or at the top, it has a create page option. I've got to name it something, and then I click add. And so now I've got a little page here. To edit it, I just click on the, night, the name of it, and then again, looking for that edit button with the pencil. And here you have that same toolbar that you saw before um, with your syllabus when we were editing the syllabus. Um, basically, you can use this toolbar to create a page that is a, as elaborate and fancy or as plain as you would like it to be. Um, you've got an option to create different headers here. Um, you can add color if you wanted to. You can add images. You can upload documents directly onto this page. You can embed media bullet points, kind of whatever you would like to do. So a page, again, you can use a page to share any kind of information with your students. You could provide, I'm just going to do a quick notification like this, just so we can move on, but you could all, you could provide as much detail as you want for your students. Um, you could link everything they'll need to know for that week. You can provide learning outcomes. You can, whatever you want to share with your students can go on a page. When I'm finished, I'm going to click on save and publish. So publishing something makes it so that students can see that thing. So I'm gonna go back to my modules area to see my new module with the page that's published. So we didn't really go over publishing yet, um, but it's really important to publish all of the things in your course so that students can see them, including the modules. So right now this module is unpublished. So it has that circle with a slash indicating that students can't see it. So students, if I go into student view real quick, won't see that module at all, including my new page, right? It should be right up here at the top, but I don't see it because I haven't published it. So I'm gonna publish my module right now. So now if I toggle back to student view, I've got my sample module, the new one we just made with my new page so that students can access. So that's an important piece. Um, as you're kind of building out your content, you want to keep remembering to publish things. Make sure everything's green with that check mark so that students can see it. I'm going to add a couple more things um, to my module just so you can see how that looks. And then we're going to move on to, um, we'll do some kind of activity stuff, quizzes, assignments, and discussions. So I'm going to click that plus sign again. And this time I'll add an assignment. I've got some already made in here, so I'm just going to add those for, for some speed here. I'm going to click that plus sign again. I can add a quiz. Click that plus sign again in the drop down. I can put in a URL. How about we just do Facebook? This is there. And all of these things, basically, I'm doing the same thing. I'm clicking that plus sign for the module. I'm choosing what it is that I would like to add. I choose it, and then I add it. 
And so you'll see some of these things added in and they're not published. So I do want to make sure to click on that icon to make sure that they are published and visible for my students. The last thing I want to show you with modules, if I click on that plus sign, is you can create headers. And all that does is it's not a link. I can't interact with it in any way. Um, but it just sort of organizes um, the module a little bit. So some folks, if they have a lot of things in a module, um, find the headers useful because then it kind of splits. You know, you could have a header that says readings, a header that says videos, a header that says assignments, whatever you might want to do. You can see some other examples down here in the sample modules. So readings and resources, activities and assignments. And hopefully you noticed as we were adding different things to our module, everything has its own little icon. Um, so students and you kind of at a glance can see, okay, I've got a page here. I probably need to click and read what's on that page. Um, I've got a couple of, uh, I got an assignment, a quiz, a link here, and a discussion board. Um, so we have a question in the chat about what's the best way to kind of practice with these modules. Um, if you don't already have a sandbox course created, so if you log into Canvas and don't see a, a sandbox created, you can email us at canvas at american.edu and ask us to make you one. The sandbox course is exactly what it sounds like. It's a place to play around. It's not connected to anything important. It doesn't have students in it. Um, you can just fiddle around in there. Um, you know, it's going to end up looking a lot like this, where it's just sort of a random collection of stuff, but you can practice everything you might want to practice without actually having to worry about messing up your real course. Okay, any other questions about modules? I know I went through that pretty quickly. Um, but any, I don't see anything else in the chat. Okay. So again, that modules area, um, it'll kind of come together once you get used to it. Um, and really the organization of it, you can ask our office if you would like help with how best to organize it. Um, but most people just kind of pick one of those two options that I said before, to especially to start. Okay, so um, as far as graded, graded things in your Canvas course, there are three different options of activities that can be graded in Canvas. So modules and things like pages, you can't have that toggled on for grading. Um, but what you can do is you can create different types of things for your students. Um, so assignments are essentially a link where students are going to submit work to you through Canvas. So if you have students who are going to create a research paper or you want them to submit presentation materials, um, or I don't know what else they might do, reading responses, exit tickets, anything that you want submitted through um, Canvas, you would choose an assignment for that. Quizzes are what they sound like. So you will build a quiz within Canvas, add different questions to it, um, and then students can take it in an online space instead of in your class. And then discussions are discussion boards. I'm going to start with discussions because they're the quickest and easiest thing. Um, once I click on that discussions link, again, I'm looking to create a new discussion. So we're looking for that bright blue button plus discussion. I'm going to name it something. Put my prompt here. Again, you have that toolbar, so you can make that prompt as elaborate prompt as elaborate as you would like it to be. You can link things, add documents, add visuals, media, whatever you might want to put. You can also attach files if you want to do it that way. And then here at the bottom of the page is where we're going to set up our preferences for this discussion board. So once you've got the title, you've got the prompt, you want to set up <clears throat> how people are going to interact with this. The options here, Allowing threaded replies, basically what that's going to do is it's going to look like any kind of online forum where replies to somebody are indented a little more. Reddit does this, Facebook does this. <clears throat> it's just a preference. It's a visual thing that 
makes it a little more obvious when someone is responding to a previous response versus to the original prompt. Um, you can toggle on an option where users must post before seeing other people's replies. So that can be kind of handy if you have students that are writing some kind of in-depth analysis or maybe something that's very personal. Um, you can toggle this on so when a student goes to the discussion board, they have to write their own post without being able to see what anybody else wrote about that particular topic first. Um, so some people like to toggle that on. Once they do post their own response, they'll be able to see everything that came before them. Um, you can enable a podcast feed with this um, if you so choose. I don't think that's a very popular option. You can also make it a graded discussion. If you don't check, check this box, there won't be a column in the grade book um, to grade this particular discussion. So if you want it to be graded, turn that box on. And then it'll ask you a couple of questions like how many points, um, if you would like to have a due date for it, anything like that. You can also allow students to like the posts. Um, so maybe instead of responding, they can like somebody else's post. And you can also add this to the student to-do list, which students will see on their homepage when they click into your course. You can make something a group discussion. Um, essentially what that does is it's going to split the students into groups um, that are smaller within your course. Um, so it's not necessarily that students are going to create a group, um, a discussion post as a group and post it. What it does is say you have a course that has 40 students in it and you wanna make the discussion boards a little more manageable and intimate. Um, you can toggle on a group discussion and split your students into smaller discussion boards. So say you have 10 students per discussion board, you'll have four different boards and they can't see each other's outside of the group. That's what that does. Um, somebody asked, is there a way to embed a rubric for a discussion board post? And yes, there is. I can show you that in just a second. Um, any questions about discussion board options or how to set one up before I click save? Okay, again, I'm gonna click on save and publish because we gotta publish everything to make it visible to the students. So here is my discussion board. Um, you see that the prompt is here for yours. It'll look a little bit bigger and more elaborate because you'll have a real prompt. Um, and then all students will do is they'll come to the discussions area. They'll find the correct discussion, click on it, and then they click this reply button. And so again, they've got the same toolbar here that you do. Um, so you can ask them to post an image as part of their response. You can ask them to post a video response. You know, you can get creative um, because they have these tools available to them. It doesn't just have to be written. Students can also attach um, different files. And then they click post when they're done. All right, and then it's gonna show up here. Um, it shows you the student's name, when they did it and what they wrote. So there was a question in the chat about how to add a rubric. Um, so once I create my discussion, I'm in this particular discussion board. Over here on the right-hand corner, there's three dots. Okay, well, I thought it was there, hold on. Okay, um, that moved, I think, since the last time that I did this training. So I'm gonna have to get back to you on how to link a discussion, or excuse me, a rubric to the discussion board. It is possible. It used to be in here. I'll figure that out and I'll email you at the end, uh, Katie. Okay, any other questions about um, discussion boards? Okay, I'm going to do, oh wait, I did see something, okay. I'm gonna do quizzes next. Okay. 
I'm not going to go through all of the um, information about um, how to do all of the different quiz question types and all of that, um, but quizzes are useful for, um, you know, you can build short little um, kind of knowledge check quizzes. You can build larger things like exams midterms, finals, that kind of thing. And you can run them all through Canvas. So students can do them outside of class. To make a new quiz, I'm going to click on the quizzes link on the left and then that blue button again, very consistent. So we're gonna click the plus quiz button. Um, right now, um, you will be given a choice to choose what type of quiz you would like to make. I would suggest that all of you choose new quizzes because classic quizzes is going to be turned off in 2024. So if you're new to Canvas, there's no point in learning both quiz building engines. Um, so I would just choose new and move on. So what you'll do here is you'll name your quiz something. You'll choose how many points it's going to have. And then you can choose a due date for it. And then we're going to click on this build button in the lower right hand corner. So instead of saving it, because we haven't actually made the quiz yet, I'm going to click on that build button. And so what you can do here um, is you have a couple tabs across the top. Um, so there's the build tab where you're going to add questions. There's settings where you can set settings like, do you want a timer and stuff? Um, there's reports, which will come in later once students take the quiz. And then there is a moderate. We'll start with the building questions because that's the most pressing thing that you might want to do. I've got my quiz title here. I've got um, instructions. And then I'm going to click on this blue plus button to add different types of quizzes to my quiz. Um, so there are different question types here. A lot of people like using multiple choice and multiple answer. Um, a lot of people like fill in the blank or essay, right? So your short answer essay style. Um, but there's all kinds of more creative options here too, right? A categorization is going to ask students to kind of drag and drop options into different categories. Um, you wouldn't ask this, but an example would be like fruits and vegetables, and they take different options that you set up and drag them around into the categories. Um, formulas would be good for like math or chemistry, so those kind of science courses. Hotspot questions show an image and students have to click to the appropriate place on the image. So maybe you have a, an architecture um, class and a, a picture of a building and they have to label the different parts of the building. They would click, you know, you could ask like, what's the column or something and they could click on it. Matching is going to be just like it sounds. They're matching um, answers from one column to answers from the other. Um, ordering, they're going to put things in order. That could be good for like a timeline, history, dates. Um, and then, yeah, true, false, you guys know. So I'm going to start with a multiple choice because it's very popular. You can add a question title, but it's not required. I would just skip down to the question stem. This is where your question is going to go. So I have my question prompt here. Again, there's that toolbar that I keep pointing out. So you could have an image as your question. You could have a video as your question. You could link out to maybe a web page that they have to review to answer this question. Whatever you want to do, you have the creativity and the possibility to do here. So I'm going to type in some sample answers. What I'm doing here is I'm just clicking in the space that's provided for those answers and typing them in. You can delete answers. Maybe I don't want four options. I just want three. I can click on the trash can here. I can add more. So maybe I want five, like I can add a brown or something. I don't know. Now I have five options for students to choose from. So you get to customize both your answer um, options and how many of them there are. 
Then um, you can choose some options here. You can show an on-screen calculator. You can vary the points by answers or you can shuffle the choices. So what that'll do is, um, you know, some students will see it in this order. Others will see it in a no different mixed up order. So students can't necessarily go, oh, the answer to number one is blue, um, or excuse me, is C, because for everybody, um, it'll be a different order. I do have to tell Canvas what my correct answer is. So I typed in all these prompts. The one that is highlighted in black here is what Canvas is going to consider the correct answer. So I have to change that to what my correct answer actually is. You can also use this little dialog boxes here to add answer feedback that is specific to that particular answer. So if somebody typed in purple, I don't know, you could say sometimes the sky is purple during sunset, but blah, 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 whatever. Um, okay. Um, you can add points down here. Maybe I want this to be worth five points. The default is one for everything. And then if I wanted to do general like feedback for the entire question, not just per answer, that button is down here. It still looks like a little chat box. But if I click on it, it is um, correct answer and incorrect answer for the question as a whole. Let's see what's in the chat. Um, so somebody asked, can we use quizzes to get real-time answers in class? For example, we want to know how many students understand the concept. So this would not be your best tool for that um, because the answers that Canvas is going to give you is per student. So you would kind of have to go through the responses from each student and count them up, like the yeses or nos. Um, but what we do offer is a tool called Mentimeter. You can email our office to get an account for Mentimeter, and that does that sort of real-time polling thing. Okay, so I've got my question built. I'm gonna click on done. So now we see on my um, page here, I've got now one question. It just tacks it onto the bottom. And then I can add, either add a question before that, I would click this blue plus sign, or after it and click that one. I'm gonna do an essay because that's also very common. Again, just skip the question title. It's not really that important. You wanna go straight to your question prompt. All right, and essays are nice and easy because basically you just type in your prompt and then you have some options here. You can toggle on um, spell check. You can show a word count if you require that. Um, you can toggle on the rich content editor. What that is, is this toolbar. So Canvas has a fancy name for it, but if you want students to have that, that ability, like maybe you want them to answer in bullet points or something, you would want to turn on rich content editor so they have the ability to do that. Um, grading notes are sort of, you know, here you can put in a little information about what you're looking for um, in their response for a little bit of guidance. And then I'm going to set my points. I'll make this 10. Again, I can add feedback um, to students here. And then I'll click done. So now I have two questions in my quiz. Um, so related to the polling function, if you are operating your course in Zoom, there is a polling function in Zoom. If you are in a classroom, though, that Mentimeter tool um, works for students who are all sitting in the classroom together. Um, multiple choice questions are automatically graded by Canvas, yes. So um, there are a number of them. So I believe the categorization, fill in the blank, um, I think formula, hotspot, matching, multiple answer, multiple choice, true or false, and ordering. I believe all of those are automatically graded by Canvas. So essentially the only ones that you would have to go in and manually grade would be those essay style, short answer style questions. So this Canvas quiz function is really nice um, for doing these kind of quick knowledge check, like those really nice low stakes kind of quizzes to see where your students are at. Um, because you won't really have to do a lot of the grading. If you just make some multiple choice or some fill in the blank, um, you know, options for the students, you don't have to go in and manually grade those quizzes. 
Um, so someone asked, is it possible to design an exam and quizzes that combines a number of quiz features? And it, yes, you can definitely do that. Um, every time I click this um, blue plus sign to add a new question, it's going to ask me, or I guess it's going to offer me different kinds of quiz options or quiz question types. Um, so you can mix and match however you would like to do it. I know a lot of people will do some multiple choice and then some essays and stuff like that. Um, so you can definitely mix those two things. Okay. So I'm going to go over to the settings tab real quick and show you that. Um, this is where you can do a couple different things. So you can toggle on preferences for security. So things like you can shuffle the question, shuffle the answer options. Um, you can show one question at a time, which basically instead of seeing the whole quiz on their screen all at one time, students will get one question at a time and have to click next to go through. Backtracking, what it's asking for here is, will you allow them, if you have one question on a page at a time, to go back and forward kind of through the questions, or do you want them to go one at a time only? Um, student access codes, this would be like a password. I don't know that this is necessarily that important because student students are kind of already locked into their Canvas course. So students who are not in your Canvas course can't come into the course and then access your quiz. So it's already kind of a lockdown system. So I, you can set a password, but I don't know that it's really that important. The time limit, um, you can check on and then you can set, you know, maybe we're going to have an hour for this quiz. Um, filtering IP addresses is basically you are telling Canvas that only certain IP addresses are allowed to access your quiz. Um, I guess this would be useful if they were all in a computer lab or something like that. Otherwise, you're not really, I don't know, it seems like you wouldn't be able to necessarily figure out where they're all coming from. You can allow a, a calculator. You can, uh, on multiple choice um, questions, allow them to just like clear the whole thing and start over. Um, you can allow multiple attempts. So it'll ask you how many then and which score you want to keep. The highest average, the last one, or the first one. You can also toggle on a waiting period. And you can restrict student result view. Um, so basically, if all are unchecked, it's going to show the student submission confirmation only, but you can also choose what kind of feedback you want to show to your students. So you can kind of toggle on your preferences here of what you would like to be able to see. If that um, option is unchecked, then students will be able to kind of see everything. They'll be able to go in, they'll see the questions, they'll see the prompts, they'll see what they answered, they'll see how many points they got, they'll see any feedback, that kind of thing. So it's kind of an open view. Some people like to restrict that. So I would recommend going to the settings and toggling that on, and then you can choose what you like here. And then the last thing here is the moderate tab across the top. So this is where if you have students who need um, more time or more attempts, you can set that here. Um, so for example, we've got this student here who needs extra time. If I click that pencil button, I can choose, all right, maybe he doesn't need double time, he needs time and a half. Maybe Obi-Wan needs no time. I don't know. You can set all of these different things here. Okay, any questions about quizzes? Okay, so to get back, you'll see that we still have this global navigation bar, but I've lost my course uh, navigation bar. So to get that back, I'm gonna click on return. The nice thing about the new quizzes functionality is you probably saw those little pop-ups coming up every once in a while. It's automatically saving everything. So I don't actually have to save what I've been doing in here. So all of these moderations are saved. My quiz questions are saved. 
I just have to click return. That's going to take me back to that first page that we started from, which was the quizzes page. Oh, this is the last. I lost which one we did. Um, so we will see um, this quiz is currently unpublished. The icon is not green and we don't have that green check mark. So I do have to publish it so my students can see that quiz. Next, we're going to go to assignments. The most important thing about the assignments page is that the assignments page is going to fill in and populate your grade book. So everything that is graded, so discussion boards that are graded, quizzes that are graded, are going to show up here on this assignments page. So not only just those kind of assignment links that I talked about before will be here. You can see here I've got a graded discussion board, got a graded quiz, the one that we just made. So everything that's graded shows up here. And the reason for that is that the grade book is completely populated by this page. So how you wanna set up your grade book has to be done on this assignments page. It's kind of a weird quirk with Canvas, but once you get used to it, it's really nice and easy. Um, so what we have here is a list of all of the different kinds of assignments in the course. And they're split into groups. So this looks similar to the modules that we had. The groups are more important if you use a style of grading where you are using weighted categories. So all quizzes are 20% of the grade, all reading responses are 10% of the grade, however you have it divided up. If you grade that way and you want to grade in Canvas, then you have to set up different assignment groups because the way you'll set up that weighting is going to be based on each of those groups. If you don't, um, if you just use a points-based grade book where say the entire course is 100 points and each of the assignments has a different number of points contributing, then you don't really need to worry about assignment groups. Um, if you would like to create a new assignment group, you click that plus group button and call it something. Just like with the modules, my new group's gonna be down at the bottom. And then to create new assignments, so this is for assignment submission links, not necessarily graded quizzes and discussions, but those, those links where students can submit files to you like essays and videos and PowerPoint slides and whatever else. I'm gonna click that blue plus assignment button. I'm going to name my assignment something. I'm going to put instructions here. I have to choose how many points it is and choose the assignment group. So I was kind of skipping over that when I was doing quizzes and discussions, but I don't know if you saw it kind of as I was scanning down the page. So once, if you have those different assignment groups, you have to make sure that each assignment that you're creating goes in the right group. So I created artifact one. It's going to go in our new group artifact and summaries. The display grade as is just preference. You can display it as a percentage, as points, as a letter grade, as complete or incomplete. That's up to you, depending how you want to do your grading, how you want your grade book to look. I can choose how many uh, attempts is, oh, here. The next thing that we want to do is submission type. There are four different kinds. So right now it was showing this as an external tool. Um, that is something, say you wanted to make using a third party tool and pull it into your grade book. So something like perusal or Kaltura quizzes, you can do that with external tool. Most people do online. So that is the typical, I want my students to submit a file to me. You would choose submission type online. Submission type, no submission. You might be asking why that is there, but remember that everything that you set up in assignments creates a column in the grade book. So if you wanted a column in a grade book for something that a student is not going to submit anything in Canvas, maybe like participation grade, you would still have to come in here, create an assignment that is a no submission assignment. 
and then you save it and it creates that corresponding blank column in your grade book for you to type in the point values. I'm going to choose online. I can choose any or all of these. If I choose file uploads, I can also restrict the file upload types. So I don't have a Mac, so I can't really open pages documents very easily. So I'm going to set this to be a PDF or a doc file. The attempts again, I can have unlimited or limited. I can turn on a plagiarism re review tool, which is called Turnitin. And so it asks you for a couple different preferences here. Um, what do you want to compare the submissions against? And maybe if you would like to exclude some things, like if something is quoted properly, I don't really need to know that it matches a quote from a journal, right? Because it was quoted properly. I can exclude bibliographic materials because if all of my students are gonna be using similar sources and it's comparing it against other student submissions, I don't really wanna get flagged for that. So you've got some options here. It's kind of up to your preferences. Um, you can choose a group assignment. So this is different than a group discussion. In group assignments, only one student for the whole group will um, submit the assignment. You can choose peer review, moderated grading. All of these are a little more advanced, so I'm going to skip them for today. And then you can set your due date here. Got some questions here. Um, can you set it so only one file can be submitted? I don't think that you can. Um, so the file uploads, um, it lets them keep adding as many files as they want. All right, I'm going to save and publish so my students can see my new assignment. And then here, this is the view that the students will see. It's very similar to what you see. You've got the instructions, points, information about this, and the file types. All right, and then one last thing I want to show you. I'm not going to get too in depth on this because there are whole we do whole separate uh, trainings just on the gradebook. Um, but what we've got here, um, this is what your gradebook in Canvas looks like. So you've got all your students in rows, all of the different assignments that were listed on that assignments page are here. The new one that we just made should be in the back, Artifact 1. So that made a column here in our gradebook. And as students start submitting things, you see these little icons. It looks like a paper with an exclamation point. That's indicating to you that a student has submitted something and it needs to be graded. All right, so we are at time. Um, and I know that um, Teddy had some kind of housekeeping stuff for CTRL for you. So I'm going to pause here, but I do have about 15 more minutes until my next uh, appointment. So if you are able to stay on and you want to have some questions, I'd be happy to answer them. <laughs>